Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I got a very exciting episode. I'm gonna be talking about my current tech stack, 2020 edition. Uh, I'm very careful with what technologies I use and I have a pretty high bar for which ones that I want to invest time, effort, and just my focus to because when I invest that time into a technology, I wanna make sure that I get that back with ease of use and snappiness. So I've been trying to put together and succeeding, I mind you, I've succeeded now because I'm doing this video, uh, of putting together my current tech stack, what I will use when working on a side project. And you get to enjoy the fruits of my labor because I'm just going to tell you all the technologies that I'm gonna use. And I believe strongly in this stack. Um, I think it is the fastest way to make an application. Uh, it is the most efficient way. I guess that's the same thing as fast. It's also the cheapest way. Uh, you can use all these technologies for the large, large price of zero dollars, which is always a lovely number. Enough setup. Let's get to the meat of it. So. The first thing that I have to consider is what UI technology I'm going to use. Um, React goes without saying, I'm a huge React fan and I want to use React. And there's other competition out there in the ecosystem. There's Create React App, there's Gatsby. But for me, the tech stack that I am currently so excited about is uh, Next.js. It is absolutely what a React framework should be. It has, I think, everything that you could want and more. It gets out of your way. It can do clients, uh, it can do static site generation. It can also do server site generation. It also has support for APIs, so it kind of removes the need for even having Express. Um, and it's just easy to use. Uh, this, is, this is the website. It follows really strong conventions for how you can lay out files, uh, where pages slash index, pages slash about, those are the pages. Um, and the thing that's lovely about it is that all you have to install as a dependency is Next, which is like Create React App. Um, but with, what I like more about Next.js than Create React App is that you can still modify behaviors of Next.js, whereas with Create React App, you have to eject. And I can't deal with that. There's a few things that I want to tweak to make it my own, and you'll see why in the next uh, functionalities. But Next.js, it is the absolute best React framework for any type of application. It will scale to any type of application. I love it. Uh, what's next? I have tabs. Ah, UI. So I am jumping on the Tailwind bandwagon. Tailwind is a CSS framework. And the reason why I like it is for two big reasons. One, I'm not a great designer. I'm just not. I don't have a great eye for design, but I can code and I can learn an API. And what I like about Tailwind is that it has some pretty default design choices that I can then combine in any combination that I want to make my own. Uh, and like, so I'm using it in this app. So yeah, it can result in these really long strings. I'm not gonna go into like how you use Tailwind. That's not the point of this video. But at the end of the day, it actually is pretty intuitive once you actually understand what it's doing. Um, here, you're saying this is a container. Uh, MX is margin on the X axis, so left and right, and it's saying set that to auto. Margin Y is two. Uh, what's cool about Tailwind is it follows um, design tokens. So it has a scale of spaces from one, two, three, four, and you can just kind of play with these numbers to see which spaces you like and see which feels best to you as you kind of play with the margins on the uh, vertical axis. And here you're saying the max width is another token, 6XL. So very easy and very clean to do. Uh, Tailwind is just CSS though, just for design. So for some, like also my goal with this tech stack is to do as little coding myself as possible. So if I can um, outsource it as best as, uh, to open source libraries, that's my sweet spot. So the next library that I have as part of my tech stack is a uh, Shocker UI. And this is for um, UI components that require functionality. Um, so for example, a popover requires some JavaScript to work by and large. And rather than me having to code all this logic, uh, 
I'm just gonna use the library for it and just be happy with it. And the designs of this and Tailwind don't seem to be too far apart so that I don't have to worry about there being a clash of things. And then of course, uh, if I wanna do just custom CSS, if I really, really wanted to, but really the point with Tailwind is to not have to. My go-to library is Emotion uh, as a CSS and JS library, which is the best of both worlds for me in terms of other competing CSS and JS libraries like styled components. So you can do that with Emotion um, like this, but then also you can just do inline styles, which sometimes is just fun to do when you wanna customize these things entirely yourself. Data, how do you do data in a, in a web app? Uh, I am off the Redux bandwagon for better or for worse or for whatever, and I am just using vanilla context. It is the, it's built into React. It works for most of my use cases. I'm not doing some wild data manipulations that have to be propagated across the entire spectrum. It's just context. It's easy, it's clear. If you wanna know more about context, I have other videos about that, but context. And then for um, data fetching, I've become a big fan of this library called React Query. Uh, React Query is a library that makes it easy to fetch, cache, and update data in your React application. Uh, so you can use React Query with Use Query. Um, you put a key as the identifier like for that request, and here's the actual API request. And then what's cool is that you just make a custom hook and you can use it in your page, use items, and there's your data. And it just works for you. Um, you can do mutations that will on, you know, deleting an item, it'll invalidate the cache for this key, which is this, and then it'll refetch that data so you have the freshest data on there. It almost makes it look like you're using WebSockets because the data is updating in real time. It is very nice. Uh, I haven't delved as deeply into React Query as I would like, but as I develop this app more, I will be sharing more insights into it because I do think it's very, very cool. Um, and then before I actually have data, I actually want to fake data so I can just have something on the screen. And this library is one that I actually enjoy a lot called Faker.js. It's a way to generate massive amounts of fake data just so I can, you know, model out my data and not worry about actually writing up fake code. What that looks like is this, you know, little function I made. I'm using the Faker API to actually generate this fake object that eventually will be persisted in a database. But for now, as I'm just trying to get the application looking right, I have it as this, uh, using this Faker library. <coughs> and speaking of data, when I actually do want to save my data in a database, uh, I am a big fan of JSON, uh, and I do enjoy myself some MongoDB. Uh, this is, uh, I am a big, I, so I do work at MongoDB when I record this video that I'm not being paid for this, but I do think it's actually a great product. And the best part about it is there's a free tier, which is always the best thing. And you can use, you can create a MongoDB Atlas, which is a hosted MongoDB database. You get back a URI connection string and then using Next.js's API's behavior, you can actually make an endpoint that will easily connect to a MongoDB database over the network and return you live data from the database. Just with Next.js, MongoDB, all being hosted and just working without any big complaints. Um, I haven't really settled on which, if I'm gonna use an ORM, if I'm just gonna use the raw MongoDB driver, I haven't really decided that yet, but it's pretty easy just to use the driver itself. So that might be the way that I go. Um, and then this was the piece that took me a while to find, and this is authentication, which is just a pain to do like user management. It's solved, it's a solved problem, and it's just a pain to have to hand write yourself if you don't need to. There's this library called Next Auth that makes it pretty much plug and play to be able to let people log in through GitHub, Apple, um, Slack, literally almost every provider you can think of they have, where's the uh, providers? All these providers, you can easily get as a way for users to log in and the code just looks like this. You're using next off, you do some brief configuration with some OAuth tokens and that's it. And you just log in and you use some of their hooks to be able to say if a session's there or not, and that's it. 
all of a sudden you have people logging into your, to your application and you don't have to worry about it at all. It is the fastest way to get a authenticated application up and running. And then I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about testing, which I haven't done yet, but eventually I will. The, the, I think the new default tech, the default testing stack for front end and web applications is um, Jest as the testing framework and runner. Uh, Jest.js is just good and solid and fast. Uh, when testing React applications using React testing library, which is just better than Enzyme in my opinion nowadays, it um, uses the public API for React when writing and running tests, which means that there's no lag when new features come out in React to have to update React testing library to support it. It uses the public API and it just works. And it also encourages a, I think a correct way of writing tests. So ones that are more user centric than code centric, where you're testing what happens when a user clicks a button rather than what happens when you set a prop, which people don't use your application like that with props. They test it by clicking on things. So write your test that way, which I think is the right thing to do. And then Cypress for end-to-end -end testing. It is a joy to write end-to-end -end tests with Cypress. It is, I will write, I'll make a video about Cypress itself because it deserves its own video, but Cypress is delightful. And then to kind of start where we began, we actually have to host our code somewhere, our Next.js application somewhere, and no better than the people who originally wrote uh, Next.js, but the company Vercel, uh, which I hope I'm saying that right, but deploying it on their platform is drop dead simple and up joy, just a joy, really easy. You just connect your GitHub repo to Vercel, and then when you wanna do a deploy, you push up your code to GitHub, Vercel sees that you pushed it up and then just deploys it. That's pretty good. Better yet, you make a branch off your main branch and you push up code there. Vercel will also build that branch. You can kind of have a preview of your changes live in production. It is so cool and just such a pleasure. So that is my current tech stack in 2020. It is, I think, the fastest, most efficient, and most enjoyable way to write a web application in this year. Uh, I'm building an application in my free time. I'll kind of uh, share with you a little bit more as I get more things to share, but um, it, it, it feels good to code again. I like, I like teaching. Teaching is great, but it's also great to code because uh, for me to be able to teach you, I have to teach myself. And the way for me to teach myself is for me to learn things. So go figure how that thing works. I'm curious if this aligns with the stack that you use or if you have things that you'd switch out. I'm curious as well. Let me know in the comments down below or to the side or up above if you have your YouTube layout that way. That'd be weird. Uh, thank you for watching. It's been a pleasure talking with you. Pleasure uh, sharing knowledge I've gained over six months that you get to consume in 10 minutes. Look at that. I don't call it fast news for nothing. Thanks for watching. See you again next week.